This is the Red All Over Show, sponsored by footyprint.com, with me, Joe Beardsall, Alan Smith, Josh Atherton, and we've uh, drafted in Bobby Assel uh, to chat about uh, that 1-0 defeat in the first uh, playoff semi-final against Swansea. We've got a second leg to come on Saturday, obviously. We're going to be looking ahead to that one as well um, and talking about what we think. Uh, can the Reds turn it around? A 1-0 defeat in the first leg. Can they uh, beat Swansea in the second leg and make it to Wembley? Um, Bobby, thanks for joining us. Always great to have you on. It's been, I don't no think problem, you've been guys. Thank you well. We've not had you for YouTube before. How's, how's life? Everything ticking on okay? Yeah, not bad at all. Thank you. Good stuff, mate. Good stuff. So I'm guessing you watched the match. Um, just couldn't get ball it back at net. What did you think to it? Yeah, frustrating night. Uh, I thought, particularly second half, we dominated the game. Uh, the only thing lacking was that final, final touch that puts it in the back of the net. I think if we'd have scored early on the second half, we had a couple of really good chances. We'd go and win that game comfortably, two or three one. Um, so yeah, frustrating, but great signs going into the next game. I think Swansea realised they're in a, a still in the tie. Uh, they they came and obviously sat back and tried to soak up all our pressure, and they really put, uh, probably had two chances all game. A great great finish to be fair to them. Cuts inside. Uh, and lovely finish. Uh, but apart from that, they didn't cause us really any problems all night. So a lot of positives to take into the second leg, definitely. Got to talk about it, lads. I think all three of you were there last night, weren't you? Did you all get in? You, yeah. Bobby, were you in? Did you get in up well as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, see? No, three, no. All in. You had to get to today, didn't you? Just to say that you've been inside. We saw a proper match, not, not amateur football. We saw professional they give me stick because I've, I've been at Upwell today for end of season media kickabout. So, you know, so that's why I'm getting a bit of stick. But I weren't in Upwell last night. I was watching from my living room. So, yeah, but how was it, how was it gents? Because I'm really interested to see. It sounded really loud on telly. You know, like I watched Bournemouth game before and it, it you could hardly tell there were fans in, to be honest with you. And then we watched Barnsley. Amazing, amazing evening, Joe. Amazing evening. From Pontian, from North Stand, from East Stand. It just reverberated uh, uh, noise. And for four and a half thousand, it sounded like 20,000. Uh, but Blair said it sounded like 30. 30. And even when, when they scored, Ayo scored, we got straight behind them. There were, there were nobody who didn't get behind Barnsley Football Club last evening. And it's what we need. And we've been here before. Bobby will know that. We lost to Huddersfield and we went to Huddersfield and we beat them 3-1 to get the playoff final. So it's not over. There's still lots to come. The only downside is we've not scored three times in, in what, 270 minutes against Swansea. Uh, that, that, that's tough to take. But it's, it's a fresh start. It's 90 minutes. And I think that second half performance when Carl Morris came on, it made a difference to our to our lineup, and as as Bobby says, that first ten minutes we pushed them back, we pushed them back, and I feel Swansea didn't come to give us a game. To be honest, they went to, to soak pressure up and to go back with a draw. Bobby, Al's mentioned that uh, you, you know, obviously your experience being in playoffs before. I mean, what do you think yeah. when you, you think back to that? I imagine the lads will probably use that actually, and, and talk maybe even talk about that that time and, and think, yeah, we can turn it around second leg. Yeah, I think I actually think it's an advantage. I know it sounds silly, but mentality is massive in football. So we'll go there really with nothing to lose, no pressure in terms of we're one 0 down. We've got to get, uh, we've got to win the game by more than two goals. Over those, obviously going to extra time, they might have the attitude they beat us three times this year. We've not scored, and they'll have that in the back of their minds going into that game. I think that they'll probably think the game's over and they're comfortable. Um, Huddersfield did the same against us they showed a real arrogance going into that second leg um, and it showed in the game um, I'm hoping it'll be the same turnaround this time Yeah, fingers crossed and I've got to give Josh a bit of jip because he's uh, yeah, he were, you were excited weren't you today Josh because he liked you Bobby growing up so yeah, he's a bit, giddy, yeah. bit giddy a bit giddy about being able to chat yeah. to you today that's why he's quiet probably a bit shy aren't you Josh never heard of this nervous quiet. nervous what can you do when your favourite players are? Do you know what I mean? It's one of them ones. It's one of them ones. But, Pleasure yeah. to meet you, Josh. <laughs> lovely. It's lovely to meet you too. Um, but I think yesterday it was just a, 
it was just a frustrating game because we didn't score when we were on top. And uh, I think that's that's the biggest downside to it is that we had that 10 minutes where we were really in control and we were just unfortunate. We were just unfortunate. It just wouldn't drop for us yesterday. And I think on another day, we win that game 2-1 and we look comfortable, but... Lady Luck just weren't on our side yesterday, and it was just it was just so frustrating, just not to just not to, to set to celebrate with all the players as well after such a fantastic season. It saw it just didn't end on on that perfect high which you'd like it to as well. It was fifty fifty balls, wasn't it? They didn't go our way. There were times when it could have gone in our favour and we could have gone direct and and attack their goal, but we we, didn't, we just didn't get luck. Hopefully, the luck changes. Uh, on on Saturday uh, at Swansea, Bobby. I feel like if we get one against these, we might get two or three quite easily. I just think it's like one of them one of them things. We just don't seem to be able to score past them. Obviously, at league games in this game, but I think if we oh, score yeah. early, what do you think? Yeah, I think that actually coming into this game, they're probably the team that was out of form, and you could see that last night. They didn't play great. I've never seen Connor hurrying hit so many long balls and misplaced passes. And that's because of the pressure we put them under. It's got to be exactly the same going there. I think there'll be more space in behind. Uh, they'll come out and probably attack a little bit more being at home, which will open up space for DK and Morris for their pace and power to get in behind. Um, first goal is obviously going to be crucial during the game. Um, but as you say, we've not scored against them. But if I remember the games, that, that certainly the home games, We've had lots of chances against them uh, and they'll know that and they'll know they're probably going to have to play. They, they won't be able to play their normal style of play against us because that will in, uh, invite us to high press. And if we win that ball in good areas, that's what teams have tried to stop us doing this season. Yeah, I mean, they're defensively solid, Swansea, but I don't, I don't feel like we've deserved any of the results we've got against them this season. I know that sounds like maybe sour grapes, but I genuinely don't. Like, I'm not going away and got better side. <laughs> like, when we got beat by Coventry, I'm like, better side, actually. They just played better than us on the day, deserved it. But, like, I just don't feel that. I feel like they're just tight and scrappy and know how to win a game, see a game out, pretty much. I mean, they must have took an hour on half of the throw-ins. It was so long. Oh, man. They were sending me to sleep, Ali, in my living room. Probably not you or well, but to me. <laughs> They're winding down clock, one not they, from, from first whistle, to be honest. Uh, what got me is that that linesman, as I say, on West Ham side. He couldn't make a decision on his own. He had to get, wait for the referee to make a decision for him. Yeah. And it was that line. I know you get some of the officiating in the offside. It was a tight goal. I'm not arguing. It was a great finish, but it was a, it was it was a tight call. Um, but as I said, we've got to put that behind us. Uh, we've got to go forward, move forward. I still think uh, Valerian will lift the lads. And as Bobby says, we've nothing to lose. We've everything to gain. Uh, and it's the last 90 minutes, or it could be the last 90 minutes of the season. But we've got to go there and push. We've got to push, push, push. And take it all the way. Uh, just up for Freddie Woodman as a off day. And also, their defenders, DK only had to breathe and they fell down. Unbelievable defending. I mean, I know Bobby was a defender, but some of them, them free kicks against DK, uh, some were, were, were free kicks, but others, oh. And way, way jumped up and, and st- stamped. It were like, me, me, that got it in for DK last night. Yeah, I, th- I think it's fair to say they marshaled him fairly well. I think Swansea would probably say from their perspective. Um, Bobby, what's it been like around the club these days? Because you're still obviously still working it. What's, what's it been like this season around there? Just on a more positive spin of how yeah, things have yeah, been yeah. generally. This season? Atmosphere has been brilliant. Um, obviously, within the academy setting, we try we've tried to distance ourselves from the first team because we usually eat in the same uh, canteen, etc. So we've had to obviously with COVID. Uh, separate, but we still see them regular. Uh, the lads are very united. You can see it's a very similar feel to the team I came into 2004, young team, uh, all really close friends. Got a great manager that's united everyone, sets really high standards. You can tell that he's really aggressive with them, but in a right way, and they know where to stand. Uh, and off the field, he's a very, very good guy, mild, great approachable character. And, you know, when you see him at the sideline, he's very aggressive as a winner. He's always been a winner as a player and he's transformed that into the team. 
but he's all about unity, which I, I really like that because he's fair with the players and honest. Yeah, and they all seem to respect him massively as well. You can you can just tell, can't you, that you know Val's got the respect of everybody at the club from the sounds. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell. You always see with performances. We'll back that up. You've got players that he rotates the front three, especially then they don't sit on the bench sulking. That's another good sign that they believe in what the manager's doing. They know they're going to get a chance to come off the bench and make an impact. Um, and he's used that tactic really well this year, probably better than any any manager in the league, changing that front three at times and putting fresh legs on. Um, he may have to do that again, sadly. Uh, but yeah, he's been a breath of fresh air for the club. For, as I say, really good guy. Um, forget his tactical side and how he's managed the football club. He's a really good guy. And I think that's always testament to the person. And in unity, Bobby, it, it, it breeds strength, doesn't it? And we have got strength in that squad. Total strength. Yeah, yeah. The unity is massive in any walk of life. Um, but certainly in a football arena, it's like a family. So when you're united as a family, as you know, you you, you can do all things uh, and you can go against the odds. And we've done that this year. Um, upset a lot of people. I think there's been a lot of prideful teams thinking, you know, why are these playing like this and beating us? Uh, there's been a lot of criticism aimed towards the manager and the team with their style of football, which you know, it's just jealousy, really, because they've not been able to beat little old Barnsley. And, you know, we've bullied a lot of teams. Uh, it's been great to watch because it reminds me of what I, what I class as a Barnsley team. Previous managers in the past have probably gone out of, out of that, but, you know, Daniel Stendhal come in and brought us back to that. Um, and then this manager just took it to the next level. It is. That's the thing that I think we just love about Val so much as he has. It's just our style, isn't it? Hard work, graft, just honest, honest work on pitch. Um, right, lads, do you all want to ask Bobby out? Because I know that they'll be itching to ask him some stuff, especially you, Josh, because I could tell they're still quiet. Come on. Well, I'll give him five yeah, minutes. Uh, no, it's embarrassing, though, Josh. I've told you, don't be like Alan. <laughs> no. It's not that, it's not that hard, is it? Um, I was just thinking, when it comes to these big games, you've got the experience of playing, you played against Liverpool for us and uh, you played, obviously, in a playoff final in the semis. How how different is that compared to just a regular league game, like, go, just going out there? Yeah, much different. I know everyone will say it's just another game. It, that's just how clear it is. It's never another game. It's, you know, going into them, the importance of them, uh, are important not only is to your own careers but to the football club and to the town uh, yeah, and the players will know financially and, and that it could be a massive incentive to get promoted for them but they'll also know and the manager will make them aware the incentive is to the football club financially and to the town you know imagine Barnes in the Premier League with a modern riches it just brings in so much revenue into the community and it has a knock on effect so it's absolutely massive and also coming out of lockdown um, and what not well the nation's been through but obviously Barnsley this is our town it just means so much to the people last night's atmosphere is the best I've seen for a long long time at Oakwell uh, it was very emotional when everyone come out hearing everyone because you know watching us for the last year and they've done some commentaries and it's just been dead and you don't realise unless you're at the game how quiet it is um, you won't see that when you're watching it on iFollow or Sky but being there, it's like eerie, it's, it's strange. But last night was fantastic. So you can see the fans are so desperate for us to get to final and get into the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question again, every player and manager knows how important big games are. It's interesting you said, Bobby, about changing town as well, because you look at it, it sounds mm. silly, but you look at things like obviously town centre being renovated, all that stuff. You're thinking, how wonderful would it be when everything's up and if you got Premier League fans coming across mm. from big clubs every week and it yeah. will make a difference, won't it? It will make a difference to a town like Barnsley. Absolutely, Absolutely yeah. Once you're in the Premier League and it's the biggest league in the world, you've got sponsorships, you've got all sorts of eyes on a little old town like Barnsley. Last time they were in the Premier League, without a disrespect to that achievement, it, the game's moved on so so much and it's gone worldwide. The brand's just gone worldwide. So to have Barnes there, all of a sudden you'll you'll generate, I don't know, thousands and thousands of fans around the world because everyone loves an underdog. And you can see that with the Leicester story. Um, you know, so why can't we be that? Yeah, it'd be it'd be brilliant to see 
the, the generated income coming into the community just after a hard time. You know, everyone always says, can anything good come out of Barnsley? Well, you know, on the next two weeks, I think uh, Beth England was the first woman to play in a Champions League from Barnsley. Hopefully, John Stones will be the first player to play in a Champions League final from Barnsley. So, yeah, if we can get in a Premier League, it just puts the town on the map. Right then, let's talk about we how we're going to do it. On. <laughs> we had Bobby Hassel on last week's show, and when he went to Wembley, he told us, uh, sorry, Bruce Dyer, what am I saying here? Bruce Dyer on. Oh, say that. And he said, when I he went to Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> you get used to this, Bobby. You get used to this, it's Alan. Oh, I'm getting giddy now. Uh, he dyed his hair to go to Wembley. A certain yeah. Bobby Hassel did say, to get Millennium Stadium. Who's going to dye the hair in this present squad if we get to Wembley after beating Swansea? Uh, well, we'll have a guess on who would do that. <laughs> I'm going uh, Carlton Morris. Yeah, I was just about to say Carl Morris, yeah. I fancy him for a good air dye. I reckon yeah, I reckon yeah. he I reckon be up for that. Good lad. The story behind um, mine was a was a bet. Um and because we won, mm -hmm. uh, I just kept it and ended up keeping it for two years. And it was funny actually because every scale that I used to see or or and they'd say they always noticed me more because of my hair. And I, you know, I thought I'm gonna keep that then for two years if everyone's noticing. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I've always wanted to ask you. Just like Josh. What's that? Sorry, Al. You said just like Josh Atherton. That's why I'm going to get me sent in to be a freshman. Should dye, dye my hair back blonde then. You'll yeah, see Bobby, it. just for your information, Josh had a really, he did a proper Kenny Dougal full blonde a while back. So we were uh, giving him some stick for that. Good, good. <laughs> I've always wanted to ask you, Bobby. Now, you'll know a song that everybody used to sing. To, in support here. I've always wanted to ask, did you even like that song? Because it would have been a, it's a bit, you know what I mean? It's a bit online. I mean, we were, you know, obviously it's all in good taste and support towards you, but I've always wondered, what's your thoughts? Liked it, not liked it, or weren't bothered just to appreciate support? Yeah, just appreciate the support, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, the, that's the best answer. Yeah, I found it funny. So, yeah, yeah, good. Good man, good man. Sorry, that was that's always been on, on my head. Um, <laughs> right. I want to ask before before we let you go, Bobby, and finish off. We want to do a, obviously get your prediction for the second leg. But is there anything that needs to change going into this second leg, or is it just more of the same and just hope that lady, you know, that something shines on us and we get ball it back at net? Yeah, is I think there more any the more of the same yeah. as what we've done all season? More of the same in the second half. I think first half yesterday we won at a highest tempo in terms of intensity, the way we press and get forward. I do think some of that was down to nerves because the fans were back in. Um, and that's just a natural reaction. Some of the players that played last night wouldn't have played in front of Barnsley fans. So they've been extremely nervous going into the game. And that can sometimes take a, a little bit off your game. But second half, once got used to it, as I say, I thought they dominated. So to start with that same energy, we can't sit back and just see what Swansea are doing. That's not us. I think Valerian, the manager, will... We'll get them up for this we, to be t intense uh, from the kickoff. And for me, if we play like we did second half, we've got a real chance of winning the game. Yeah, I think that's fair. Shall we do his predictions? Uh, lads, we'll see. see what, you, what do you think, Bobby? I'll go with 3 1, just to mirror up the last time that we lost 1 0. Oh, personally. I love it. Confidence, <laughs> belief, that's what we need. 3 1, 3 1 to the Reds. Um, I'll get yours too, actually. We'll get Big Kev on uh, and then we'll do your predictions afterwards. So I'll let Bobby go now. Bobby, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Always great to have you. And just to finish, okay. just want to say, um, as you have seen, we're obviously all as Reds fans supporting Bailey as much as we can and I'll be behind. Thank you, guys. Um, so just... I appreciate it. We appreciate the support. Thank you. Yeah. Give me my best wishes and all the best, Bobby. I will do. Thank you. Cheers, guys. All the best, Bobby. Cheers. Cheers. Right then, Big Kev. So 1-0 defeat for Barnsley in the uh, first playoff leg, but it's not over yet. Got to go to uh, Swansea uh, and try and turn, turn that around and uh, hopefully come back with um, a win so we can get to Wembley. What did you think to it? Uh, I think that Swansea manager got his tactics right. I mean, uh, he neutralised as best striker by putting two lads on, very physical young lads, same age as him, um, and really... Next game, we're going to have to be a bit more tricky. I don't know whether he put squad out first and he, he altered his team to sort it, but um, they've seen him as his main strike force, DK. So we need to sort of 
go away from that. I think I think I'd tend not to start him uh, and then bring him on as an impact player because I think, like I said, um, they just then put the two of them lads on in him and they just had older in what game. So, um, you know, we need to look at a different tactic, play on ground and try break them down that way. Is Morris starting then? Yeah, Morris and Chappers, I think, this time, just to sort of... To, to to I won't I won't give I mean I don't know what what rules are about getting teams out beforehand. They gave him out at the same time, Kev, so they wouldn't have seen it before, but they might. Mm, have but they're predicting that he was going to be playing. That's what they've done. They're predicting he's going to be playing, and they've they've done that now. Whether they're going to think, oh, they'll not do this next time, which we can't we can't do the same same tactic because it didn't work. Uh, we need to sort of confuse them, bring on like I said, play ball on ground, start with Chappers and Morris. Uh, and then uh, you know, if it's not working, alter and bring players around. Make them have to sort of use their tactics against us. We need goals, and they know it. This is the problem. We nil nil. It weren't so bad. We've got to go for it, and that leaves space at the back. And I, and I think that their strikers will definitely get one. So I think we've got to win two one to have a chance. We've got to get two goals against them, which we haven't done so far. Do you believe we can do it? Yeah, I mean, if them players want to be in Premier League, them players want to go down in history, they've got to do it. I mean, it's it's down to them. I mean, they either go there and lose and fade away and nobody remembers them, or they go there and they win 2-1 and then get an extra goal in extra time and win that tie and they go on to Premier League and everybody remembers them for rest of, you know, rest of the turning bounds. They think they'll be heroes. So, it's down to them. So that's what Big Kev reckons then to the second leg of uh, the playoffs between Barnsley and Swansea. Obviously, the second leg being in Swansea. Um, so we're going to do our quick caption competition sponsored by footyprint.com and then we will crack on and finish the show by giving our predictions uh, for the game. Remember, Reds, we need your predictions and your comments. Uh, predict whatever the score is. Um, the prediction competition is getting very close. Obviously, this could be the last game, but we're hoping it's not. We're hoping there's going to be two games left. The Wembley dream is still one. alive, Julian. It is, it is. It's only 1-0. It's only half time. It's only half time. Classic playoff cliche. Um, so, yeah, make sure you get predictions in reds for this one and let us know what you think the score is going to be. Um, so, caption competition, uh, sponsored by footsprint.com, is this photo this week. Rich, as you may have heard earlier in the show, I got to have a little bit of a kick about on the um, sacred Oakwell turf this week. Don't want to brag too much. Two assists, uh, a last-minute equaliser to make it for all. Not a bad, not a bad day at the office, really. Josh, have a, Josh, that because he couldn't get in last night, he's climbed over at wall like he used to in our days. He's climbed okay. over so he can walk on that turf before the dig it up. You know, he joined the rules last night, but he had to go and he said, "Look at my foot; he's gone on that too." Yeah, he's just—he's been down and out on these two assists and a and a dive for the next couple of oh, weeks. Oh, I'm not having any of this. So there's some rumours, rumours that um, I may have dived to win a last-minute penalty, which then obviously put away, you know, absolutely buried, didn't I? Um, there's some rumours. Double going- down, Ted, in action. Eh? What do you mean? What do you say? You know, we've been going on. Oh, oh, oh. Who's tumbled down Ted? Who's tumbled down Ted? What opposition? And he's there in real life. It's Joe Beards all himself. I'm say a big shout out to uh, Beth. Uh, is it? Oh, I can't remember her second name. Beth, who works in the Beth Sefton. Sefton. Beth Sefton. Beth Sefton. Straight on Facebook, gave me a bit of jip and a bit of banter, saying, You dived. And then Andy White chipped in as well. Oh, the gang from the club, they're a good banter. Did Dave Murphy's uh, partner kick you again? No, on my team this time. Lovely, lovely play. Yeah, good, good football. I can't, believe you've asked to be on, I can't believe you've asked to be on her team. He didn't want to be kicked play. then. He didn't want to show his bruises on show again, Josh. Oh, man. Yeah. I always seem to get a bruise when I play with them. They're, they're a good footballing, good footballing gang. Uh, anyway, so the photo that um, I'll put back on. There we go. Um, all you got to do, just comment something in the caption, something funny. I, I'm, I'm joining this because y'all are going to give me some stick. Josh is already looking like he's ready to comment. Um, <laughs> comment, caption with something funny or silly. You get yourself a red all over lottery ticket. Uh, last show of the season, we'll basically draw it out of a hat or um, one of these online spinny wheel things that's uh, 
uh, the fairest way. And basically, you can get a Red All Over Lottery ticket for each show. So one uh, caption comment per show. And then basically, if your name gets drawn out, you win 100 quid. Thanks to uh, footyprint.com and some footyprint merch and some Red All Over merch. Fifth, second prize, 50 quid. Third prize, 25. So that's all you got to do. Great. Finish off the show. Predictions. Alan Smith, are we going to Wembley? Are we going to beat Swansea and turn this one around? 1-0 down, first leg. Can we do it? Can we turn it around at the Vitality? I think I'm going to say as well. We're going to emulate what we did in 2006. It, it, it's on the cards. Uh, Swansea's not going to know what's hit them. So I think we can go 3-1. If we come out at blocks, as we're doing that second half with the high intensity and the pushing. Unlucky we uh, count Morris won what it cost bar. Uh, unlucky as well uh, with Callum Britton uh, when Woodman saved. Uh, it's all to play for and still positive that we can reach, beat what's behind me. We can get back there. What do you think, Josh? Are you still as confident? Because we were both really confident going into first leg, saying we were going to get a big result, and we didn't. So I'm sure there's lots of Swansea fans having a bit of a laugh at us at the minute. Yeah, definitely. But I, I'm still confident we can make it to Wembley. Um, I think it's not to be confident a bit about it, because I expected us I expected us to win last night, because I thought that uh, being at home, fans behind us, I thought that was a real opportunity, but it was just one of them days where it just wouldn't happen for us. We banged on the door as much as possible and we just nothing ever came for it, which was just a frustrating one. But as Bobby said, the pressure's still on them, to be fair. They've still got to see this out and they do defend against us very resolutely. And I think that was shown yesterday because they just sat back with a low block in front in front of the back four and just tried to hit, to hit us on the break with the pace of Jamal Lowe and Andrea out wide. But... So it's something we need to be wary of, but I, I still back us. I still think we will do it. I mean, you sh it just showed when Carl Carlton Morris came in that second half. We just looked a better. We just looked a different team. We were much more direct uh, when he carried the ball forward as well. I think that terrified them because we weren't just lumping it long. Then he'd pick it up deep and start driving at them. And there are two or three times he got into a nice area on edge, on edge of the box. I think that might be now um, the Callum Britton opportunity came from. Or Carlton Morris driving it I and mean, carrying the ball. And I think that's something which we missed a bit yesterday, just for a bit of variation in his play. Someone actually was picking up the ball and driving at him. And because when you do things like that, someone's got to come out and meet you. And that creates gaps and also plays to run in behind. I think that was just something which we missed a bit yesterday. But I think we'll turn it round. I think, I, but I think we'll do it on penalties, is how we're going to win. I see a one, I see a one nil win. And it's going, it's going all the way for extra time. And we're going to win on penalties because we only ever do stuff hardest way. Last season against Brentford, we waited till last minute to stay up, and then we've we this season we had the, we had several opportunities to seal the playoffs, and we did it in the hardest way we could. Which I'm surprised it didn't actually go down to the last game at season. So on it way we're going to do it. We're going to do it hardest way, and it'll probably be the last five minutes in which we actually do score. You just want. I can us. actually, you know what? I, I think Josh is bang on. He just wants us, Joe, to the extent season even more. I mean, you're on about Morris. Morris on edge of box, he was driving forward, wasn't he? And he was just about to pull trigger when I yeah. chopped him down. Uh, but yeah, I think. I, Morris has got to start. Morris has got to start. I think he has it. instead of instead of Freezer. Uh, we, we, we've got to start with his three, three best Woodrow, uh, DK, and Morris for me on Saturday. On Saturday, I think occasion got to freezer a little bit. I think he just, and it's understandable, you know, you're not playing in front of fans for that long. He just looked a little bit nervous for me on ball. Worked as hard as ever, but just a little bit nervous. I think Morris has got to start because I think he's his most dangerous player uh, going forward. And I think that you, you know, you can't overlook that. He's okay. He's had to come off bench because of that groin injury for a bit, but now he's fully fit. Get him started. He's just got to play. He's just got to start. Um, and yeah, uh, I'd also like to say that the um, only other thing before I give my prediction is that I don't understand why Val has gone away. And I want this is not a criticism because he's obviously done it I'm incredible this season. But why Callum Styles? Why he's not thinking about utilizing him in midfield like he did earlier in the season? I just felt like that last five, 10 minutes, why not just have a bit, you know, stick him in midfield. Instead, he, what he did is he brought John Williams on and he, he stuck Britain in midfield. And I don't really see the value in that. 
I think Styles is more likely to get you a goal. Do you guys agree, or am I just? I don't know. He just he scored he knows, when he, he did. Knows it best. Before, I'm, not, I'm not going to say he knows best. He, he sees him day in day out, doesn't he? he does, uh, we, we only see him on TV this season, and normally on Saturdays. I mean, he must see something different. And I'm not going against Valerian Ismail. I believe in his, his, his ethics and what he believes in, Joe. Yeah, and me neither. I'm just thinking about Swans. The, the issue we've got here is it's not that we're not as uh, it's not that we're not a, as good as Swansea. It's the fact that they're very good at keeping us out, and it's how are we going to break them down? And I've said it on this show earlier. I think we get one goal in second leg. We could put two or three past them potentially. Because I don't think, I think it's one of them, mentality shift. If you get a goal in first 10, 20 minutes at game in second leg, suddenly it's equal and suddenly it's, oh, oh what are we going to do? We're going to have to sort it out. You know, it's, it's level pegging again. And I think we could go on and win. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely not writing this off. I'm still confident we can go through. Uh, I'll give you a prediction. I'm going to go 2-1 to Barnsley. <laughs> So you're going for extra time as Mate, well. They're doing well, it the super hard way. We're going to go one nil down, <laughs> and I'll think it's over. And then in about seventieth minute, we'll probably score one, and it'll be like, oh man, here we go. And then last minute, we'll probably score just to take it to extra time, and then beat them. Well, my team penalties. talk for Saturday lads is straightforward. So the last game of the season, look. Brentford last year, we were all but down. Let's go out. We can do all this. And that's all he's got to say to him. That, for me, is it is unbelievable. Because if you say that, we overturned it last season, last day of the season, uh, Clark Adore, last-minute goal, and we survived. This is a bigger, bigger survival. This is the survival to get to the Holy Grail, which is Wembley. And next step is a premiership. So for me, let's do this. Let's remind them where we were last season and go out guns blazing. Yeah, just we just got to absolutely go for it. Kitchen sink, same effort as first leg, but if we get a chance, just make sure we take it because that's what it comes down to, isn't it? Playoffs. If if Britain takes that chance, and that's not a criticism of him, but puts his laces through it, I think it's one all. I think it's you know we might have gone on to w- win it. Didn't happen. It's fine. It's half time. How many times this season, Josh, have Barnsley come back from one nil down at half time? Yeah, exactly. there's been a number, there's a number of times this season where we've said that's a game we'd have lost in a previous year, but we've come back and we've won. Um, I think it just these games aren't easy. There's a reason why Brentford, bought Bournemouth, Swansea, and us are in top six. We are the <laughs> Top six, we're in the top six, we're in the top six best teams in this league. So they're not going to be easy games, and it's going to they're going to make it difficult for you to compete. And that's why that's why yesterday were frustrating and are because they are an organised, good defensive side, and it's not going to be easy. It's not as simple as we'll just find another way to break them down because that's not how it works. They're a good side that can adapt to it. It took them when we brought Carl Morris on. It took them what fifteen minutes to adjust, and we and that that was opportunity there to to grab a goal because apart from that there's not really there weren't much that we could do differently because there are a number of times DK clipped one forward to Woodrow and if it's if there's someone just a bit quicker there he beats Freddie Woodman to the ball and he's, he's round him and for me I wouldn't I'd think about starting Chaplin because I think he's got that bit of extra pace when we do drop them balls in between a keeper and a back four he's got that pace to nip in and he's around them both um, and I think it's it's a risk which we which we run as well having a high line, and I think it's a risk which Swansea ran yesterday. And there are two two or three opportunities where we could have just nip, nipped in there before the keeper. And all it is is a lapse in concentration, and 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 we're in. And I think that's not which Chaplin's really good at. I, I'm I'd go. I agree. I'd go DK Morris and Chaplin, just because I think that that's the way we're going to get past them. That's nothing. And we need a referee who plays 10 minutes additional time when. Uh, <laughs> Just going to take this throw woman, in. When, Just going to take this throw. Oh, dear. Die hard fall. I mean, die hard fall. And I mean, the, it didn't even a shot, is it, in air? He just catches it. And, and it looks like he's been shot by a sniper. I mean, to be honest with you, Al, you can't blame uh, Woodman's had a eight game, honey. You can't you can't blame Lumming them time wasting a bit, but what annoyed me is time wasting in twentieth minute when it's that's what's annoying when it's constantly slowing game down. It's like be a bit braver, have a go. You your playoff sides, you know, when Andre Ayu cuts in and scores that goal, you think fair play, it's a great goal. 
But that's on it bit of quality they showed all game, apart from just keeping us out and keeping it tight. Well, we'll Mind you, Peter, your fans won't, won't like us, but what happened at Huddersfield? Well, the way uh, Luke Steele, so... Oh, like, well, uh, that's it. We all, we all play the game when it's, when it's convenient. Right, <laughs> that is uh, the show for this week then. Come on, Reg, you can do it. We're believing in you. Let's make it happen on Saturday and we'll be back with all the reaction, as usual, Saturday night with an instant reaction show. Come on, you Reds. You Reds.